Hi and welcome. We're so excited that you chose to join us today. And we hope that this message will inspire you to live the life that God designed you to live. For this message or others like it, you can go to our website or you can find us on our YouTube channel. Now sit back, relax, enjoy this message. Lord, we thank you for this morning and this opportunity to gather together, to turn our attention upon you, to worship you together. And now we thank you for this opportunity to receive your word. And right now, we we turn our attention upon you, Lord. And we just, we put our expectation out there. We We put our hands to receive. And Lord, we just say, come now. We turn our attention upon you. Open our hearts. Holy Spirit, come and speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I titled this message, Yes, the the New No. Yes, the New No. You know how like words in in our culture change? Like if you say to somebody, dude, that was so sick. You're not actually saying that was sick, like ill. You're saying that was like so crazy and awesome. Okay? And like people say, Oh, he was so bad meaning he was so good. <laughs> why? Why does, that, why, did, why does that happen? I don't know why. But, so, yes, it's the new no. I don't know why. I'm just doing it. So, it doesn't make sense maybe, but it will after we get done talking. So, yes, is the new no. You know, nobody really likes to hear no. It's just not that much fun. Because when you ask something and they say no, it's, it's over. It's done. Can't, it doesn't go any further. A child goes, Mom, Dad, can I do this? No. Okay. It's over. <laughs> but people love to hear yes. Um, okay. So on the word no, this, this past couple of days I was at Sam and Lawrence watching their dog because they were in California. So I'm sitting on the couch and I, I think I was watching a movie or, or I was eating. That's what I was doing. Eating a plate of food. And here comes Buster. That's their, their larger dog. He comes up, and he sits down, and he looks at me. You know what he wants, right? Let me have a taste. Let, let, me, let me get a bite. I just looked at him, and I just kept eating. And he's just sitting there, he's like, hey, 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 come on, come on. I'm like, just, and then I start, as he kept looking at me, I just started going. He's going, hmm, hmm. The moment I started shaking my head, he, hmm. And I said, no. And he goes, hmm. He just started going crazy. Don't do that. I, I hate to hear no, don't. I'm going, no, you can't have me. He starts running back and forth, and he's whining and barking. He's just, I can't take it. Don't tell me no. can't handle it. You feel like that sometimes? Don't, don't tell me no. Just say yes. So we don't like to hear no. Dogs don't either. Um, but we love to hear yes. Uh, this past week, uh, I had the, yeah, it was kind of a, a fun experience, but I, so I'm sitting in the office, and Linda's there, and she's doing her duties or whatever, and I'm talking with her, and here comes a grand, a grandchild, one of the million that she has, <laughs> ten, ten to be exact, but it seems like a million, so her and Gary got, yeah, it just seems like, oh, there's another, oh, another one, like, how many are there? There's ten, I think, right? So, here comes one grandchild in, hey, Grandma, can I play with your iPod? Or iPad, and she's like, sure. Two minutes later, same, same grandchild. Grandma, can I have a dollar? Sure. Yes. <laughs> here comes another grandchild. I, I don't know if the one went out and, hey, look what I got. So here comes the next grandchild. Can I have a dollar? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon, she's like giving out like three or four dollars. And uh, she turns to me, she goes, I just can't say no. I just, I, I got to learn to say no. I just say yes every time. And you know those grandkids are like, oh, let's go talk to Grandma. I know she'll, uh, she'll say yes. And, uh, but, you know, I was thinking about that, and I think, I think our father's like that. He loves to say yes. Sometimes we have the image that he's like, man, God's always saying no. No, he's always saying, he likes to say yes. It actually brings him joy to say yes. And you might say, yeah, but what about, yeah, there's course there's those things that are like this isn't okay but he loves to say yes and I was thinking about that verse 
I actually didn't, I, I didn't find it, but it says, whatever you ask, whatever you desire, ask it, and you shall have it according to his name, in his name. And that word name, you know, when you say, when we say name, it actually means his nature, according to his nature. So when we talk about God, if you ask in his name, you're asking according to his nature. And whatever you ask according to his nature of who he is, he's like, yes, come on. Yes. 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 I think we hear no a lot. No, stop that. It's easy to say no. You know, with kids or I don't have kids, but I've worked with children. It's so easy. No, stop that. No. You know, they're acting crazy and they're doing something they should. No, stop it. It's easy to do that because it's just, it doesn't require anything from you except to say no. But when you say yes, it might require like, yes, let's go over here and do this and play instead of torture your friend. Yes, but now this requires you to do something, right? The yes requires a little bit more. But our Heavenly Father, let me say, He loves to say yes. He is a yes God. He is a yes God. According to His nature. Don't miss that. But according to His nature, He is a yes God. Loves to say yes. Amen? Um, You know, the best picture of that, of Jesus, or of our Father saying yes, is when He sent His Son, Jesus. When He sent Jesus, it was a resounding yes to a broken world. To a crazy world, in fact. It was a resounding yes. Yes, I love you. You see that? The past, this past trimester, I've been talking with the students. We've been doing a class on ethics. And um, so it's Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So I think my message might be mixed with some of that, but it'll be, it'll be good. Um, so he goes, he goes, now to start out talking about ethics, a Christian ethic, he goes, we have to look at the very reason why we came to ask the question of ethics of can I be good, how can I be good, what is good, what is right and wrong, those types of questions. That's what kind of brings us to what is ethical. So he goes, but if you're going to look at a Christian ethic, he goes, you've got to take all those things, get them in a ball, throw them away. You're like, wait, but that's the reason why we're here. He goes, if you want to look at a Christian ethic, you have to throw all that away and you have to, you have to ask one question. What is the will of God? Not what is good and evil, what's right and wrong, but what is the will of God? That's, that is good. We, it's easy to think as in, well, this is right and this is wrong. And when, I say, when, he's, when he's saying, what is the will of God, it defines what is right and wrong. But it, if we go to what is right and wrong, we get into good works, trying hard, we get into that rather than like, Lord, how can I respond according to your will? How can I say yes to your will? That's, that's the question. So, so, he, so he goes on to talk about Jesus Christ and he goes, in order for us to be truly human, we have to experience and be formed into, into Christ because he was the true human. There's three areas. So I'll try not to bore you. But if you'll stick with me, I think, I think they'll, you'll have a moment and be like, oh, that's good. So just stick with me. And every once in a while, give me one of these. Mm. Just, just pretend. Even if you're not really interested, just pretend. Be like, oh. If you're completely lost, just be like, oh. And then when I look away, be like, Phew. he's lost it. I don't know what he's talking about. But just hang in there. If we can get around this thing, I think we'll land on something. Be like, oh, that's good. Okay. So he says about Jesus, this Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he says, Jesus was not a human, but he was the true human. He was the human. Okay, and I think what he means by that is, in order for us to be truly human, we have to live like Jesus did. We have to be formed into, into his likeness. Okay? And he defines that in three areas. First, he says that Jesus, uh, he embraced humanity. Okay? He embraced it by leaving heaven and becoming human. He embraced his humanity. Okay? But it, it's more than just he became human. He actually, Dietrich says, he actually embraces humanity as, hum, as, human, uh, as uh, human beings truly are. Not the ideal human, like, well, if they'd get their act together, then I could come and embrace them and love them. No, he came for the, for the real, the broken human. Humanity, broken. Crazy. 
And he goes, all of humanity, he goes, that Jesus, all of humanity, uh, what, how do you put it? He, they release their rage upon the body of Jesus. When he was beaten, crucified, all of humanity, they released their rage on his body. And that was the humanity that Jesus came for. I think sometimes in this area, we, not just in this area, but, but as humans, we think, I got to be good. I got to be good. And, and, and I hear people say this like, well, I heard one lady say this. Um, I was talking about, you know, my brother Joe's in a car accident. And I said, yeah, but he's got a great church family around him that are really reaching out to him. And, he, and she had an experience with a husband who uh, had been in the hospital. And she goes, yeah, man, the church really got around us and helped us. And she goes, you know, people are, people are good. People are actually good. And I think what she meant by that is that people are kind-hearted. But in all reality, people, we're not good. Only God is good. Like, we're not actually good. We're, we're, we can be kind-hearted. Don't get me wrong. We can be kind-hearted. We can show love and compassion, which is awesome. But in and of ourselves, we are not. And Jesus didn't come for a humanity that was good. He came for humanity that was broken. Not for the ideal humanity, but the real humanity. Broken, lost, and who, re, who like I said, they release their rage on his body. That is the humanity that Jesus came for. That's powerful. But you know what's even cooler, or, or, or even greater, is that he didn't just come for the humanity and be like, all right, I embrace you, you can stay as you are, you're crazy. And Jesus, you just stay there. You just stay and be crazy. He said, but he didn't do that. He came, embraced humanity, crazy as they were, and he said, but there's something greater. He went to the cross, paid for the sins of, of, of all humanity. So, before I get ahead of myself, I want to look at three, three yeses. Three yeses. The first yes was Jesus coming uh, into earth, embracing humanity. Becoming human and embracing humanity. That was the first yes. After that yes, there's a yes. So that was Jesus says yes. Let me, let me do it this way. Jesus says yes, then we say yes, and then Jesus says yes again. That's the three yeses we're going to look at. Okay? Yeses. Not S's, yeses. Yays. Yay. And nay. Yay, the new nay. All right, so... He says yes to humanity. But then Dietrich goes on to say, he goes, so he came, he embraced humanity, but he didn't leave humanity there. He judged humanity. Wait, judged them? We're not supposed to judge, right? No, this judgment's good. Because he goes, this judgment is the judgment of a merciful, compassionate God. He goes, this God who, 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 uh, who judged was the very God who himself became human and took on sin, the sins of the world. It was that God who judged. So it's not somebody who's on the outside going, ah, y'all are crazy and I'm going to blow this thing up. It was the God who immersed himself into humanity. And then he said, now I'm going to judge it. Not so I can just be angry and just judge it, but he judged it so that we can be reconciled. He judged it so that it can be reconciled back to God. That's good. So the second yes is us saying yes. That yes is, I say yes to Jesus. I say yes to what he did. Okay, let's, let, let, let's define that a little bit. Uh, if we could turn to Matthew... Oh, excuse me, Luke. Luke. Uh, we're going to go to chapter, let's see here, chapter 14, verse 25. Luke fourteen twenty-five. It says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus, 
And turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, his wife, and children, his brothers, and his sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. I think it's in Matthew, the same uh, passage is used, and it says, if, if, if one doesn't love me more, so when you hear that word hate, we kind of have in our minds somebody who hates, you hate somebody because of whatever reason. We're like, I got to hate my parents like that or my siblings. He's saying in compared, in compared with, with loving me, it's like hate. Okay, so we got that. He's not actually saying hate people because it's not what he's encouraging here. Okay, just checking. Just want to clarify. So he goes, he says that if anybody, any, anyone wants to come and be my disciple, he must hate even or, or disown his, his own life. And they, he's, he's to take up his cross and follow me. What does the cross represent there? Death. Yeah. When we say yes to Jesus, we're saying death to everything else. We don't like no. No, you're saying yes. You're saying yes. Here's the thing. When, I think the Bible even references, when you take a, 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 like a, a acorn, a seed, right? And when you place it in the ground, what's the first thing that happens? It dies. Oh, no, it's great. No, we should be happy. It died. Why? Now it can live. Now it can grow. That's one of the, what do you call it, an oxymoron? Or a, a, that's the thing about the gospel. We die so that we can live. So, Jesus came. He embraced humanity. He said yes to humanity. Now it's our turn to respond. So we say yes. We say yes to him. And we say yes, we say no to, to our will, to our way. Does that make sense? The yes is the new no. We don't say no. Here's the thing. We don't say no, I'm going to stop being a bad person. No, I'm going to stop lying, stealing. We don't, that, that's not where it starts. If you do that, you're going to be saying no and be tr- you're going to try the rest of your life and you're going to continue to fail and fail and fail. And pretty soon you're going to be like, forget it. I'm doing what I want because this doesn't work. Yeah. But if you say yes, if you say yes, you're in fact saying no to those things, but you're saying yes to Jesus. When you say yes to Jesus, there's a death, death to your own will, but there's life that follows. I was reminded of that scripture that says, there's pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Sorrow lasts for a season, but then there comes joy. There's death so there can be life. So when we say yes, we're saying no to our will and our way, and we're saying yes to his will, his way. And that's where we find true life. So he goes, when we experience death, Dietrich goes on, he says, when we say, when we say yes to Jesus, when, we, when we're death to ourself, and we, we're, our, our will, our way is crucified, he goes, that's when we start to become truly human. Well, I'm a human, so I mean, I just... I just live and I'm human. No, Jesus redefined what it looks like to be human. Human is to embrace your humanity. I'm not talking about, because Dietrich goes on to say, he goes, look, we're not, I think sometimes, he goes, I think sometimes we're, we think we have to outgrow our humanity. Like, our humanity is evil and it's, uh, it's bad, so we've got to try to not be human. Jesus came and was human. It's good. But what it looks like to be human is, is to die to ourself so that we can live in Christ, so we can live. That's what it means to truly be human. That's good. That's good. Okay, so we say, Jesus says yes to us. Then we respond by saying yes. And then God, when we say yes, he responds again by reconciling us back to Christ. He says yes again. So there's three yeses. Does that make sense? I want to focus my last, just my last point here. I want to focus on that, on that final, the final yes. When we said, 
Hold on, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. When we said yes, uh, uh, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you believe on your heart that he raised Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. So in a sense, in that moment, you're saying yes. Am I right? You said yes. Yes, Jesus. Okay. Sometimes I think, from what I've experienced, is in my mind I sometimes think, I said yes that one moment. I got saved, gave my life to Jesus this one moment in time, right? And that's true. You did. That just happened, right? That just happened right there, right then. It happened. But that yes is like when the disciples said yes to Jesus, we're going to follow. It was, in fact, just that we will follow. I think sometimes we, we compartmentalize our lives. I said yes then, so I'm saved and good. I just, I clock in, you know, once a week. And maybe we, we, we don't, well, if I said that, like, no, nah, I don't mean to do that. But I think sometimes in our lives it becomes that. But that yes is a continual yes. That yes is a continual yes. Every day, every moment of every day. It's a yes. And I would define that yes is saying yes to the Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes. The thing is, is I think most of us, do you get, most of us like principles because it's easy and it's clean. Well, give me the bullet point. I'll read it. I'll follow the directions and everything will come out nice, right? Step one, step two, step three, step four. Nice. Everything worked out great. It's nice. You guys, you guys know principal people? Well, boom, 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 and that's what you get. That works great in business. That works great in business. Follow these four steps. If you do this, you get that, right? Do this, you get that. I think sometimes we, we try to translate that into our Christian life, our, our relationship with the Lord. Read, pray, go to church, boom, life, right? Boom, 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 this is what you get. Principles, they're good. But I think the one principle, that, the only one principle that works in our relationship with the Lord is yes. What, how can I grow? What, what, what do I need to do to continue and grow my walk with the Lord? Just say yes. Huh? Yeah, just say yes. Well, could you give me the five-step plan? I like that better. It's a little more clear. Yeah, just say yes. I, I don't know what that means. Just say yes. Let me explain that. Um, you know, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, right? They went into the desert, and God brought them to the mountain, right? And he's like, all right, Moses, you and me, we've, we've talked, we've hung out, it's great. Now, I want, I, want, um, I want to meet with the people. Like, okay, tell them to get ready, prepare themselves, and come to the mountain. I'm going to meet with them. I'm going to talk to them face to face. I can just imagine Moses, he's like, Yes! I'm sick and tired of these people. I'm trying to tell them what to do, and they're not listening. Now they get to talk to God. No, I'm sure he was excited. Oh, they get to experience what I get to experience. (laughs) Anybody ever feel like that? I wish that God would have an experience with God so they would shape up. (laughs) No. So I'm imagining that that Moses is very excited. Like, oh, this is going to be great. They get to encounter the living God. So we all all kind of know what happens, right? Here's the big day. They come out coming to the mountain, and all of a sudden the mountain, it starts, there's lightning and thunder, and there's smoke, and all the people are like, yo, man, this is not what I expected. This is not, I don't know. I'm imagining that a few people wet their pants. <laughs> Maybe some of you guys like, like storms, you know, like the th- I like storms, like the thunder and the lightning, it's like, whoa, but it kind of reminds me that I'm not that, I'm kind of a, I'm important, but I'm kind of small. God loves me and he sent his son for me, but I'm still kind of small. Kind of makes me feel that way. So I'm just imagining they're walking to this mountain. And there's lightning and thunder. Maybe, rock, maybe lightning are hit, is hitting rocks and rocks are blowing up. There's like shrapnel of rock flying. I don't know. Just trying to imagine what this is like. And there's smoke. And they're like, uh, Moses, on second thought, we're not into this. We don't, I don't know what all this is, but this is what we're looking for. What? He, we got a great idea. Why don't you go and talk with God 
and then you'll come back and tell us what he said, and then we'll tell you what we think, and you can tell him. You can be the middleman. We like that. So that's what they got. They got the Ten Commandments. They got a list, they got a list of, here's the ten bullet points. They're, God's like, all right, well, I, I would have preferred to look at you face to face and speak with you, but you weren't into it, so here. So they're like, okay, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself, right? Hey, it worked, but I think it might have been plan B. I'm not sure. Like, this isn't like a theological statement, and I'm not trying to, I'm not sure. But I think that was step B, plan B. God's like, hey, let's talk face to face. like, no, he's like, all right, I'll write up some rules for you guys. And he made the rules. He goes, all right, here, live by these. Not really ideal, but it's, it's what they wanted. I think sometimes we resort back to that. Oh, yeah. Hey, God, did you just give me the 10-step plan, and then I'll, uh, you know, I'll just read the Word and pray, and then you can kind of answer some prayers and stuff, and it'll be good. It'll be, it's safer that way. It's, it's neater. It's a little more neat and not messy and doesn't require much for me. I just got to do some reading, you know, read. Don't do that. Do this. Okay. And it kind of reminds me of like doing it in our own strength. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. Okay. I'll just not do those things and then I'll be all right. It's easier that way. And God's like, oh, but it's not what I ever intended. I, I desire to be in relationship. To be in relationship. So the fourth or, or the final yes is saying yes to the Holy Spirit. Let's turn over here to John chapter 16. Have you guys watched the movie or heard of the movie Yes Man? Yes, man. Yes, man. Nope. Okay. Okay, if you have, would you just... Just... Okay, if you see a couple of... All right, okay. Got one bolt, so I've seen it. I've also seen it. It was funny. So, yes, man. You guys heard of Jim Carrey, right? Some of you guys can't stand him. Yeah, okay. We got a couple more. All right. So, Jim Carrey, probably my favorite comedian. Um, he's just funny. Come on, guys. Some people are like, I can't stand him. Dubba Dubba was so crude. And I'm like, well, that was funny. If you're not sure what's funny, that's funny. So... <laughs> yeah, all the men are like, we love talking about that stuff. And girls are like, so disgusting. <laughs> I think every time I have a conversation with a guy, it just happened last night. I was talking with a couple guys. Every time we start talking about ball movements, beards, e- every time, without fail. And the ladies are going, why? Why do you got to do that? Why do you got to ruin conversation by doing that? And we're like, no, we just made it better. <laughs> it just elevated in its awesomeness. It just, it, it went through the roof. Now every time I get to see those guys, I'm like, we have this connection. It's all, it's all about bodily functions. Like, yeah, I got, I got you. This might be T- TMI, but I just texted the guy this, this morning. And I was like, but what were you t- talking about last night? I'm like, hey. <laughs> anyway, I won't tell you the details because I'll be verbally reprimanded. <laughs> So yes, yes, man. So the whole the whole thing is that this guy Jim Carrey says no to everybody, including like his best friends. Hey man, we're gonna go hang out. You wanna come with? Sorry guys, I'm really busy. You know what he's doing? He's watching movies at his house by himself, he's just sitting on the couch. First movie, second movie, all night. Sorry guys, I'm busy. So he's the no man. And he meets this guy who's going to the yes conference or this yes convention where they just tell him, just say yes to everything. Yes, yes. And so after a series of events, he gets a hold of this and he just starts saying yes to everybody. And at first, it's kind of crazy because he says yes to a homeless guy who takes all his money and his cell phone. He runs out of gas and he's stuck. He goes, I said yes. He's just like angry. But then he meets this girl who gives him a ride and his life begins to blossom and it's incredible. Um, all because he said yes. I'm not doing it justice, but it's really funny. Um, and in the end, you know what the kicker is in the end? He goes to this convention. 
He, oh, so he helps with like a, a soup kitchen and they give people like clothes and stuff. So he goes to the convention and as the people are coming in, they don't show this, but they, you know it after what happens. But so as people are coming in, he's asking, hey, would you donate your clothes? <laughs> so he's got a truck. So everybody's like, yes, because you have to say yes to everything. So everybody gives him their clothes. So the next scene from the back, yeah, maybe this is too much, but from the back, the guy, the speaker walks in, and everybody goes, yes, and they're all butt naked. But it's, I mean, it's way back, so you can't, it's just, you can't see anything. Okay. And he got him good, so he's giving away clothes. He goes, I know some people. They love to share their clothes. So he just asked them, and so he's giving out their clothes. <laughs> ah, that's good. But that's not what we're talking about today. That's not where we're getting at. Let's get back to the word, John 16. John 16, we're going to start with with verse 5. It says, now, Jesus speaking, now I am going to him who sent me, so I'm going to the Father, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go, the counselor will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of sin uh, and righteousness and judgment. In regards to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, uh, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much to say to you, more than you can bear, now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All this belongs to the Father. All all that belongs to the Father uh, is mine. That is why I said the spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me again. So, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. And the the verse I wanted to focus on was uh, verse 13. He says, and He, the Holy Spirit, will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. How many of you guys are in or have been in a season of life, especially when you're maybe, you know, after high school, to 21, 22, and you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know. Am I supposed to go to college? Am I supposed to start working? I don't know. Have you guys been there before? I'm not sure. Well, it can be like that spiritually speaking, right? I don't know what to do. Do I read right now? Should I pray? Do I need to move? Do I need to go talk with someone? I, I don't know, right? I'm not really sure what needs to happen right now. Guess what? Jesus gave us an answer. Holy Spirit. He came and He will guide us into all truth. He's called the Counselor, the Teacher, the Comforter. And then later on in Acts, Jesus says, and I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And when He comes, He'll you'll be filled with power. I think it actually says, you'll be filled with, with, with power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my, uh, my witnesses to Judea, to all the different levels so when we say yes to the Holy Spirit we're just saying yeah I I, let me say it this way I I was talking to a couple of guys this past week and I think the week before and and they're just talking about you know I'm not really sure what this is gonna look like I'm a little concerned I'm not sure that I'll go through it and come out on the other end okay this 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 season of life and somebody else is going, I'm just not sure what to do. And I said, you know what? One thing that I learned, or I should say am learning, um, is that the thing that takes the pressure off of trying to figure it out is just saying yes. Well, but I don't know what that looks like. Jesus says here, I'm sending the Holy Spirit. He's going to guide you into all truth. He's your comforter. He's your teacher. But I don't know what to do. Ask him. Well, can I get the 10-step plan? Yeah, you could. If you really wanted it, you could. I think you can make it on the 10-step plan. 
I think, I think you can survive. I think so. But I don't think you're going to thrive. I think you will survive. You'll make it. But it could be like punishment. It could just be tough. Here's the one-step plan. Just say yes. Well, how do I do that? Talk to the Holy Spirit. Ask Him questions. Ask Him questions? Yeah. Lord, what do you want me to do right now? And then listen. Holy Spirit, would you guide me? Let me tell you, He's saying yes. There's this term in theology called... um, I think it's called prevenient grace... I think uh, A.W. Tozer, or, or I think one of those guys, he says, God is always previous. God is always previous. And so he goes on to explain that, that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is always drawing us. Always. Well, I chose to serve God. No, he, he sent his son. He took the first step. God is always previous. He's always previously drawing us, calling us. Always. Well, even when I'm doing my work? Yeah. I mean, he's patiently waiting. I think it's Brother Andrew. He worked in a monastery in the kitchen. He's like making food. You guys, never mind. Washing dishes. Not, not a real exciting job. I'm trying to imagine if he was going, I'm reaching my calling right here as I'm washing dishes, scraping dried food off plates. I've reached it. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he just pure pleasure off of seeing clean plates. Maybe. I, I can't imagine that, though. It's pretty hard for me to. But you know what he would say? He goes, I, I can't wait to finish my work so that I can turn all of my attention upon the Lord. What? He goes, the only reason I, he said something like, the reason I don't like to work is because it distracts me from thinking about the Lord. <laughs> That's what he didn't like about the work. Not the fact that the food was crusty and didn't come off easy. That's not what he was complaining about or what he was, didn't like about it. It's because he couldn't have all of his attention on the Lord. Wow. So he, said, he uses that phrase, him or Tozer said, uh, God is always previous. He's always drawing us. All we have to do is just say yes. And we do that by listening and by responding. Does that make sense? We, we've been talking about, like, the kingdom of God. We've been talking about the miraculous. We've been talking about signs and wonders, miracles. We've been talking about those things the past couple of weeks. And I've been asking myself, okay, how do we get there? How, how, how can we get there? Like, what do I got to do? What, maybe I'm not holy enough. I need to be more holy. Maybe I'm not good enough, so God's not choosing me. Um, maybe if I become like super holy or super good, then God will be like, finally, they did it. Here comes the presence of God. Here comes the... I don't think that's it, though. I think it's just saying yes. Well, are you saying that you can be crazy, live a crazy lifestyle and say yeah? No, because you're saying no to God there. You're saying, yes, Jesus, I'm going to be a disciple. I'm following you. Then he's like, all right, let's go. I think we make it difficult. Jesus, could you give me the uh, the five-step plan on how to heal somebody? He's like, just just pray. Just say yes. But don't I have to, like, do some stuff? Like, spend a certain amount of number on my knees praying? Well, that's good. But we're just responding to the Holy Spirit. Just say yes. It's not about good works. Jesus took that good work stuff and like, we'll see ya. Here I am. Just say yes. Yes, Jesus, come. Yes, Jesus, here's my life. When I say yes to Jesus, I'm saying no to my will, my way. I'm saying yes. Yes is the new no. Say yes first, and then you're saying no to those things. You're not saying, no, got to stop that, got to stop that. Just say yes and you'll stop. John 15, 14 or 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Sometimes we get so focused on like, oh, he's a bad boy. He needs to try harder. 
maybe if he understood your heart, you know, like a, a son or a daughter, maybe if they understood your heart and they just was like, man, I just want to please my father. I just want to please my mother. And they wouldn't do those things anyways. Same with us. If we understood the heart of our father, how much he loves us, cares for us, how much he desires good things for us, and we just said yes to him, why would I want that anyway? If I understand that his will and his way is far better, far greater, then I'm just saying yes. Father, yes to your will. I just say yes. What does it look like? I'm not sure right now, but today I'm going to say yes. Holy Spirit's like, come on. Okay, yes. Come and read my word. I'm, I'm going to show you some things. Okay, yes. Hey, share. go talk with this person. Just show some kindness to him. Yes. I'm not sure what I'm going to say. It's okay. Just say yes. When you get there, you'll figure it out. What if I fail? That's okay. Failing's okay. Just don't stay there. Just get back up and try again. Just say yes. I think sometimes we make it kind of difficult just because we want the five-step plan. But just take the one-step plan. Yes. Be a yes man. Be a yes woman. Say yes to the Holy Spirit. I think when we'll do that, the heart of the Father will be expressed. I think there, in that, the heart of the Father, I think that's where the power lies. Apart from Him, we can do nothing. Apart from Him, we can do nothing. You can try hard, but you're going to look crazy. You can be red in the face and still missing it. But you can try hard, but with Him, all things are possible. Jesus says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever and it shall be done. What? Yeah, he just said that. Let's look at that. That's in John 15. Starting in verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown in the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. I may be beating this to death, but if it... If it's driving you crazy, maybe you'll remember it. Just say yes. Well, how do I remain in him? And his words remain. Just say yes. He's always drawing. Okay, yes. I, I think there's another passage somewhere, or there is, I think it's in John, where it says, My sheep hear my voice. They know not the voice of a stranger, but my voice they know. Will the band come? We're going to go into a time of worship. Um... I don't know where you're at this morning. Maybe you've never given your life to the Lord. You've never, you've never said yes to Him to say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. If you haven't, I want you to hear this morning that He already said yes to you. He said yes to you not because you can be good enough, not because you didn't make as many mistakes as this guy over here, but He said yes to you simply because He loves you. He wants to embrace you in all your craziness. And all your craziness, he just wants to embrace you. But he embraces us so that we can then respond and say yes to him. Maybe you're in that place this morning. Maybe you're in the place where like, man, things are going well. I love the Lord. But maybe it's just on a daily basis, okay, I want to learn just to respond daily. What would it look like if throughout the day we just said yes? 
Like not in the morning, like, yeah, I'm going to read a little bit. But throughout the day, constantly aware of his presence. Constantly aware of the fact that he's drawing us. We're saying, yeah. Even if it's just simply turning our attention, not obviously not our eyes, but the eyes of our heart, turning it towards the Lord and just saying, man, Lord, you're so good. Yeah, man, I just love you. What, what would that do? What would that do to our daily life? Let me tell you, that'll rock your daily life in a good way. You'll be so aware of what he's doing, so aware of what's on his heart, that these, these petty things that we so often deal with and become like huge, but it's only because you're standing this close instead of stepping back and being like, oh, that's not so big. In the scope of what's going on here, that's not so big, you know? What would that look like if on a daily basis throughout the day we just said, yes, yes, Holy Spirit, and turned our attention? So maybe you're at that place today. But wherever you're at, as we go into worship, can we practice that, saying yes? Yes, Holy Spirit. What are you doing in me now? Is there an area in my life that maybe needs to be submitted to the cross? Then just say yes. But it hurts. Yeah, it does. But there's life on the other side. Amen. Thanks for joining us today at DCTV. If this ministry has blessed your life in any way and you'd like to share it with us, we would love to hear about it. You can contact us at this address. Also, you can follow us on Facebook. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.